Hey, Crazy Will here today. Today we're going to be talking about how to paint 3D printed models. Stay tuned. I'm going to show you my process. Will from Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today, we're going to talk about how to paint your 3D prints. If you haven't seen my video yet on the Elegoo Mars, that's what this was printed on. Take a look at it right up here. You'd think this would be a fairly simple process to paint one of these. Not as simple as you'd think if you want to get a certain look. Now, I am by no means a know-it-all when it comes to painting. I'm just going to show you my process. There's a lot of great channels out there that show you how to paint. What I'm basically going to show you today is how I get my prints ready for paint and actually paint them because I didn't see an actual comprehensive guide that just showed you the basics. Like, you're brand new into this, like me, and I just want to throw some color on this. I want to make it look pretty cool. I think I've had pretty good results. I mean, like I said, I'm not the greatest painter in the world, but this is a look at some of the stuff that I've done. Which isn't bad. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, this isn't really tech. It can be tech. It's a little technical, so I'm going to share my thoughts and opinions, because if you have a 3D printer, you want to know how to do this. First things first, we're going to have to prime him. Now, what worked for me was Rust-Oleum. This is two times the coverage. It's a flat gray primer. I tried other primers. I didn't have too much luck, because if you want the paints to show up, you have to prime them first. So this is a very important step. Get yourself like a coat hanger or some metal twine, I guess they would call this. Now, I hollow out all my models, so you'll see there's holes at the bottom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread this through the holes so that way I can spray it. Now obviously before you do this, now you did sand it and you cut off all the edges. Now no matter what, because it's see-through, no matter how much you sand it or you try to clean it up, once we spray it, you're going to see a lot more imperfections and tabs and stuff like that after we prime it. Alright, so I got mine hooked through and I bent a little end like this on the end so that way I can hang it on something after I'm done because we don't want anything touching it after we prime it. And make sure the surface is nice and clean. Mine's pretty clean. A little bit of water spray it, clean it, wipe it, make sure it's not damp before you go to spray paint this. So we're going to go and spray paint this now. Make sure you shake the spray paint really good. So I just came in from outside. This is the first coat. We're gonna be doing two. and It's still wet, but you can see pops the detail so much better now. Let's put this up here. I have like a little area where I usually stick this. And if you wanna see my setup, please take a look at my video from last week. Upgrades that I did to the Elegoo Mars so you can see some of the little tips and tricks that I used. Turn on the exhaust fan. Okay. So I have that exhausting. I can still work in my office. It's a little noisy, I apologize. But I have it just hanging right there and we'll let that dry for about an hour. All right, so here we are. We have the first coat done. But if you look underneath, you see the little nubs that were left over that we thought we sanded down. They weren't. So what we're going to do is we have some tools here. I go around, try to hit it with this. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. You're not going to get everything, but we'll try our best. I got a regular nail file. What we'll do is we'll go over here and we'll just hit it with the sand, sand it down just a little bit and try and even it out. I see some on the base here. Try and hit that real quick. So I'm gonna go around and double check everything and look. And you're not gonna get everyone perfect, but you try your best to hit what you can. I start off with like a 200 grid, and then I go down to a 400 grid, but you don't wanna start with the 400 grid. You wanna like kinda of sand gradually. But another technique that I use, if the sandpaper isn't working for you and you have large amounts of these little nubs that you can't get to, like I have in the back of a sword, you can take an X-Acto blade and just carve them down. Just hit them with that, and that will cut them out at least. So I think he looks pretty good now. I sent some rough areas. You can 
could see. Printed them at a 45 degree angle. If you didn't see that video, you can see that in the description below on how to position it. But he was positioned at a 45 degree angle. So all, most of his, his harsh points are in the back and we're not gonna see too much of that. And everything I sand, hit it with some water first to really clean it up just to get rid of the dust. So we'll just hit this with paper towels. And you can see once I go over it, it really is just covered in dust. We don't want that sticking to the primer. And now we're gonna hit him with some primer. All right, so this is the end result. I let it dry for about two hours. All right, so this is the main reason why I'm doing this video. I wanted to show you some of the trial and errors that I went through. Superman over here was done with testers. So that's the result I got. You can see it's very shiny, the acrylic to make some of the wash which I'll show you those in a second to make the shading because you can't really shade with these like I said if you're looking for a glossy coat as you can see you know that's good for a car that's good for you know a robot or maybe like an Iron Man but not really Superman so that didn't come out as good as I'd like another thing with the testers that you need to know it comes with another bottle and it's actually a paint thinner I didn't know this but you're supposed to mix 50 and 50 so if you're if you take like four drops out of this you take four drops out of this you mix them together and it makes it thinner so you can get better detail I didn't do that I actually put this straight out of the bottle onto Superman you shouldn't do that you should actually thin it so you'll get more of the detail that's why he looks so bubbly in his face and you don't have all the detail that he should have had next I did straight acrylics I got these from Walmart straight acrylic paints as you can see it didn't do a bad job and I was kind of going for an artistic kind of still keeping the, the green resin to shine through kind of thing but it's it doesn't coat very well so this for what I was doing and on this one actually worked really well and to give you an idea I mean that's supposed to be purple which looks more like black and that's multiple coats and you can see the first coat on the back there it's a strong and pigment wise it just isn't doing the trick I tried folk art and it wasn't working out very well this piece I was trying to find something that I didn't have to prime but everything came down to I had to prime it so once I actually primed it that was what I got out of the folk art and it still wasn't as good as I'd like it to be and this came up over and over and over and over and over and over again every time I was researching paint that Vallejo is the best for model painting so that's what I decided to go with it had the best coating it had the best pigment closer you could see the pigment is a lot stronger here you could see that the colors are very vibrant here here's a better example for you that's a Hellboy and you can see the pigment how much better the pigment is how it covers the model all right so we have our model now we're gonna paint it plain old paint cap and I put a little fun tack on there. And what I do is I take the model and I shove it right on there. It makes it easier to paint and you don't get it all over your hands. You have something to grip onto and you're not touching the actual model because now we're gonna add some paint. This paint dries out pretty quick, so I made this quick sponge kind of container so that way I could kind of keep it wet, but kind of working, but it's kind of not working. I'm just going to use a regular red. I'm just going to go in here and just start adding paint to them. We're just going to sweep over them. You're probably going to have to do two coats, one really thin, and then we'll go over and do one really heavy. So I'm just going to paint everything on here, and you can see this paint really does go on nice and smoothly even though I have a cheap cheesy brush I don't really have heavy preferences and brushes I just use what works if you watch my channel you know I do what works Alright, so there's our first coat. You can see it's kind of a little bit of a transparency thing going on there. So you usually have to do two, sometimes maybe three layers. We're going to let this dry for probably about an hour. I didn't paint the base because the base we're probably going to go with a metallic kind of looking color. This is the second day. I have two coats actually on this. I applied the other coat yesterday off camera. I'm going to add another coat. Alright, so here we are with three coats. I think it did a pretty good job. We coated it pretty good. We're going to go with the next color and that's going to be black just a black put a little black right there I just do a little dab because the stuff dries out pretty quick paint brushes it's up to you what you like I have several paint brushes I'm actually gonna be using I bought a cheapo one at Hobby Lobby it's a two slash zero so that's what I'm gonna use to paint it I'm gonna take some paint and I'm gonna fill in the black areas right now so I'm gonna go for the black of his eyes
So that's what we got so far. I did the outline of his eyes. I know there's white for the middle of his eyes. We're gonna hit that later. Black, you only really need to do one coat. Go what you think looks good. There's a line here and a line here, and I'm gonna go with black back here. I'm gonna outline it real quick and just give you an idea of what I'm doing. I'm gonna switch to a different type of brush. This is just my preference, but I found a brush that has a little bit longer of a tail kind of thing going on here, so I could just wisp into certain areas. See if I can try and get some of the detail in here. And I'm probably gonna have to touch it up anyway, but at least I could try and get in there a little bit easier. Get around the edges and swoop into areas like right here. It just gives you a little bit more reach. Both sides done. Now I'm going to go for the little logo that's on his shirt there. We're going to paint in the black there. And we're going to obviously have to touch up the red. And then around his neck, I want to paint black. And I want to go for the swords. Do the swords first because they'll be super easy. Alright, so there you go. You notice that I did a little bit of a sloppy job on the swords. We want to overlap colors because I think I'm going to do these in brown in the back. If not, I can always clean it up afterwards. But so far, it's looking pretty good to me. I have most of the base colors. I'm going to go for black around his neck. If you notice, there's an edge right above the lip here. I'm going to go for the lip of the neck piece. So I'm going to go... upside down and want to try and get those same pieces again underneath his neck wind up making more touch up but I think it's gonna be worth it in the end I'm gonna go with black down the middle here because I just think that would add an accent and I did water down the black to make it easier to do what I just did so we're done with the black basically it looks like I got everything so that's the back that's the front so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a brown, and the way I wanna do this brown, it is a pretty dark brown, but we're gonna make it a little bit darker. So we'll put a good significant amount of brown. That's the browns, flat brown. I'm gonna get some of the black, and put a little bit of dab right here. Very almost blackish brown. The reason why I'm making it so dark, I'm going to paint everything in the dark and then use the regular brown to bring out the highlights. And I'll show you what I'm talking about as we paint it. Let's go around and go for all of his utility packs, if you will. All right, so I got all the brown on. It's a really dark brown. I do want to touch up a little bit of the red. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to brush over this. Just want to gently touch it. This is cold white. The white dries out extremely fast, so I only put a little bit. All right, so we're gonna go for his eyes first. Why not? And we're gonna take a clump and we're gonna just try and see if we could just go across the top of it. We'll just see if we can pick up. Oh, and I just totally screwed that up because I wasn't paying attention. We're just going to kind of see what I just did there. I just wiped over the top of it. Just try to go over it and just let the paint kind of lift on it. And that's what I should have done with that one, which is no big deal. Maybe add a little bit of water. Let's see if we can get that out of there. Make like a little pool. That looks like that kind of worked. And we'll try to just brush across the top here ever so gently. Let's see if I can do it this time. Ah, perfect. I'm going to 
take some brown, put it right next to the black brown. We want to add shading. So I'm going to think that the light's probably coming from here. It is working out pretty well, actually. We got all the brown done. We got all the black done. I touched up a little bit to make it look a little bit better. We got the white on there. I think he's looking pretty good. We're going to do the silver. Let's go ahead and start that. Now I'm using Vallejo silver. Make sure you shake this stuff up because it does kind of like to separate a little bit. I like to go with a bigger brush when I'm doing the bases. I'm gonna paint that base up. I'll grab the detail brush again. All right, so there's the silver. Obviously, it's gonna need another coat on the base. I'm gonna let that dry. All right, so I did a second coat of the silver. I overdid it with the silver on this, which, you know, that happens. Try to keep it thin with the silver. I forgot how thick the silver is. I did a little touch-ups here and there. So this is what my model looks like right now. In miniature painting, there's something called a wash, and I learned about this, and it brings out the detail actually in print you're trying to paint. It's almost like dirtying it a little bit and also adding lines. And all the wash is, it's distilled water, some black paint, and I added to my own mixture a little bit of airbrush thinner just to make it thin. I don't know the exact ratio, but so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, we're gonna kind of brush it over and let it fall actually in the creases. We're gonna try and get the creases see if we can get some detail out of that botched up job that i did on this see if we can get yeah there we go we get some of the details you see how it, like it just darkens up a little bit of the details there it's nice and wet we want to dip it into cracks and let it follow the cracks you like on a suit right there this is just going to add a little more detail it also hides a lot of your mistakes do is we're going to grab some of the red and we're going to highlight a little bit but we also want to fix water looking marks so we're going to add that in there and you can go over this with a wash again if you don't like the way this looks but i usually like the highlighted look to think about where the light's hitting or how the height light would reflect I think that's pretty much done I think that's as good as you're gonna get for me I'm sure there's a lot of talented people watching this right now thinking the hell is this guy doing let this dry I like to let it dry for a good three hours make sure everything's ni nice and dry and then I use this matte clear rust-oleum double coat bonds to plastic spray paint it's just to seal everything in again you want to shake it all right so what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna mist get a gentle coat on there we don't want to make anything run So it looks like when you just missed it. So that's basically the process, guys. This is the second coat on him. We went a little too heavy, probably, but this is basically what it looks like. Give you guys a little idea of the detail. Like I said, I'm not a pro painter. I just do what works. Like everything on this channel, I do what works. I think it came out pretty good. Due to this whole virus and staying home and basically working from home, I had time to do this, so I thought this would be a little fun project. I know it's a little different than what I normally do, but I just wanted to share. That's it for me, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe if this helped you in any way, and ring that bell if you feel so obligated to. And remember, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Later, guys. I'm gonna beat Mr. Brush. I'm gonna beat the hell out of Mr. Brush. Anybody that watched Bob Ross? This isn't a Marvel movie, guys. There's no secret ending, no strategy or something. Just hit like and subscribe and maybe click on one of the videos above. Don't know what to tell you.